Hello there. So it turns out that leagues are down for the moment, so Popper will wait until I jam some Momer Basic 2 mans. If you don't know Momer Basic, you have this thing in play, which means you basically have a deck full of basic lands and you then pay X mana and discard cards to get random creatures. And that's it. You then do battle with the various creatures that you have and that's it. It's great. It's fun. You get to see unusual cards. Although I am I'm tilting myself with the basic lands that are currently in in this version of the deck. I'm not sure what I was thinking to have this particular mixture, but it can't have been anything good. So there is some basic strategy. Uh, anyone who's played Momer before will, will know this already, but you sort of generally want more swamps and mountains in your deck because of you know abilities with uh, you know things like fire breathing, which requires lots of red, uh, some shades which require black, and you sort of want to minimize the amounts of um, islands and forests that you play to play around sort of various landwalk creatures. Obviously you, you still want some in your deck in case you get creatures with the appropriate abilities. Then you can use them, but... So a lot of cards change functionality. So for example this is a vanilla 2-2 because nobody is casting any spells. And this card is actually incredible because uh, returning a token creature will make it disappear forever, so they can just never attack with the current creature unless they want to trade it for this 2-drop, so hooray for me. I haven't actually played too much uh, Momer Basic for a while. So it's possible that the best converted man costs to hit have changed. But as far as I'm aware, 8 is still pretty great. 7 is a bit on the sketchy side. And if you're in the lead and you're, you're winning, you don't want to accidentally screw yourself over with a terrible one, 9s are very safe. Whereas 8 sometimes has things which will lose you the game, <laughs> as well as having way more high impact ones that will win you the game. Flying is great in this format because sometimes one person gets flyers and the other one doesn't, and that wins them the game by itself. So this, this Chrome Steed isn't doing anything in particular this game, since they probably can't attack anyway, and in the future this probably won't be able to attack because they'll just have a bigger guy. So I might as well get stuck in just now. Whether you play creatures before or after combat, it's usually better to do it first. Um, but abilities like Raid have changed that a little bit in the previous years. Ooh, a Jelen Sphinx. Now you'll notice there that this guy gave plus two plus two to this Chrome Seed. It's because this is a changeling. So while the opponent could have double blocked there to trade with Chrome Seed, they decided not to. What, what is this? Um, I'm I'm trying to rack my brains here to see if there's anything I'm missing here, since I don't think there's anything going on here. But I I think this just kills this, and and I took no damage, so that's great for me. Unless they're playing for massacre worm, that would be hilarious. 
<laughs> of course, playing for specific cards is usually not that great an idea, unless it's literally your only way to win. For example, you might need a Platinum Angel for various things, or uh, maybe you need to get Blazing Archon, so you need to make nines or something along those lines. But at lower numbers, there's so many different options. You can never think to yourself, yeah, I'm going to try and hit Massacre 1, for example. Yeah, time to get some uh, Trample action. It's always good to be somewhat aggressive since there are so many random insane cards that you can obtain. Oops, I accidentally clicked through pumping my guy there, but hopefully that won't uh, punish me. Uh, there are so many insane cards that, while you can hit them as well, if you get your opponent low enough, you can steal games even if they hit some like really, really unbeatable cards if they are on the hard life to or high life total. For example, like, uh, you know, Archangel Avacyn or something like that. Uh, no, the original Avacyn that gives it all your guys indestructible. Exile all zombies. So, luckily they, you know, traded off their changeling earlier, because otherwise it would have been exiled there. Another reason not to play different uh, types of... Ooh, Juggalon Tarka, that's that's a nice one. Uh, <laughs> another reason not to play multiple types is... Uh, aside from just Landwalk, there is also Sundering Titan, which is a great one that if you hit, you want to always just destroy their things. And if they hit, then you want to limit the amount of lands they can destroy. And... There's almost no, once you reach, you know, 8 mana, there's almost nothing that actually requires, for example, a white mana or a green mana in terms of the abilities they have. So you know by the, the late game whether you need them or not. And the opponent concedes, which is um, it's not really what you want to be doing in Momir Basic. You want to be YOLOing it every every time. Oh, I can't sort. I can't sort my my cards by name. Why not? All right then. Well. Here we see this very hideous deck. I'm sorry for offending your eyes, but as you see, there's lots of mountains, lots of swamps, a few plains, a few islands, a few forests. That's it. That's the tech. Uh, I think, you know, this is how long it's been since I've played more than like one or two casual games of more basic. I think you can put waste in your deck since it's a basic land, so maybe it's worth sticking a few of those in as well, in case you get Eldrazi Displacer, actually, which seems like a completely bananas card since it's just 3 mana and destroy a, a creature in this format. Making 1 drops is it's not something I like to do, since most 1 drops don't do very much. And I like to make sure I can hit all my drops up until 8. So usually what happens if <laughs> is if I'm on the draw, I'll play 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If I'm on the play, I'll usually start with a 2, but because there's quite a lot of mana creatures that would be that are really good to hit. And there's also a few really insane 2s. And if I miss 
like I hit some sort of irrelevant creature like this when I'm on the play, I just skip my three a lot of the time. Just to make sure I hit the relevant cards. So you'll see that this is the problem with making the cheap things. Where like this doesn't this could matter if they had islands. You know, drawing cards would be good, but it's gonna take so long to get this going, I'm not too concerned. And I'm taking one from this, and their three drop also gets bricked by my cell sword route. So while I appreciate the, the intention to go aggro, I find it doesn't doesn't work a lot of the time because if your opponent needs some random blockers, well, our whole deck is random blockers. Pillar of War. Well, this is quite the defensive line I've skillfully chosen to play. Cards like Enclave Cryptologist, uh, like Archivist effects where you get to draw an extra card every turn are actually really, really good because they give you the inevitability of reaching the massive numbers in a reasonable time, for, you know, at some point without skipping making cards. So you get to make 11 drops, 12 drops, and of course 15 drops, which tend to be pretty unbeatable. Another creature enters the battlefield. Well, I mean, this will probably kill whatever I make here, but if I don't make anything, it doesn't seem great, and it still trades from this. I don't want to give them more time to draw islands and just be sitting here doing nothing. See, the opponent's down to one card, which means they're going to top out at six. Ooh, Herald of War. Okay, that's a pretty good one. A uh, 3 3 flyer is, you know, pretty above average for a 5 drop, uh, as is. And the fact that it grows means that each turn I need to try and spike a, a good one to keep pace. Well, can't complain with a 4 4 lifelink. Even if I need to get rid of my cell sword brute, which you know I don't mind. Yeah, I can send this in. It'll trade for these two cards. Give me four life, or I can just leave it back to 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 block. But I think I've got the defense covered. Esperia. Wow. That seems pretty good. So, I mean, I guess it depends how greedy I want to be. Since I can let them attack me, draw a card, and then try and let them attack me one more time in order to draw an extra card but then I risk something bad happening to Esperia and then it might grow out of out of trading range but yeah so here's the opponent topped out at 7 and I'll be able to make a 7 and 8 and 8s are normally better It's a it's a pretty good one as as a giant ground creature. It's not very exciting, but as a sort of weird anthem, then they get to you know make bigger and better flyers than I do theoretically. Oh no! My my flying creature. Then I got his flying creature as well, so I guess nothing much happened. But I basically just lost out on drawing a card. That's what happened there. Tornado Elemental is it's fine. Like, it's got an evasion thing, but it's not that exciting, really. Tornado Elemental can pull you out of just uh, 
unwinnable situations. All right. Wow. Oh dear. Well, th this is an example of an eight, which is very bad, since uh, <laughs> only this guy can attack and artifact creatures. But um, this can't attack anyway. And if the opponent just trumps this, I don't get to attack with any other creature. In the meantime, the opponent's making this. Which presumably is going to fight my Pillar of War to death, so he gets to get some counters on us. And now they have two giant flyers. So things are looking, things are looking bad for our hero here. Avatar of Fury. At least this flies. I can certainly block Kami of the Honored Dead. And this guy has to attack since it's uh, <laughs> since it's not doing anything else. I can block the Kami and next turn if I feel like it I can leave up mana to trade here. In the meantime they get another flyer which is a good run of sevens here. This is a very specific ability. I think I just want to play another eight. Glass spider, and that's that's totally fine. I'm happy to get anything which can tangle with their flyers. Tornado Elemental is actually kind of threatening, even though it can't attack right now, since it basically can attack for once unblockably. So once this guy eventually dies, or kills them, but he'll eventually die, I assume. If the opponent, if the opponent gets to six or less, then that's great. I'm going to snap off a double block here, since trading one for one with either of these is great for me. Since I would probably have to keep a couple of mountains open for this uh, fire breathing next turn, so now I can just freely spend my mana and not have to worry about it. Double Goliath Spider. That's pretty unusual. But not complaining. After all, they have reach and not first strike. It is important to note that this guy does have some non flying text. So, if one of the opponent wants, they can gain eight life. I'm totally on board if they do that, though. See, the opponent had been thinking about uh, leveling this guy up, but they've decided to decided they needed a few more creatures. This delirium obviously is never happening, but as a seven-seven flyer, it's a nice one. Not as nice as these Goliath spiders, though, obviously. Yeah, I keep playing the uh, A-drops pre-combat because there are quite a few good ones um, that can like pump your whole team or bounce their creatures. Sort of things that I want to generally happen before attacking with uh, this Legionnaire. For example, like if I hit Hoverguard Sweepers, I would probably actually just send with the Tornado Elemental and 
kill this guy. Well, I'm on six, so I'm certainly not gonna just take this. A ghoul tree, that's uh, that's a complete break right now. Alright, my creatures can attack again. Which I'm totally fine with. I think if I was the opponent in this situation, I would be blocking with Cryptologist and Sight of Spawn Shambler, just so that I definitely can't attack with any of these guys. Especially considering how dangerous this is and how this is actually just bigger than their creatures. Example, maybe I'll hit Necroma next turn. Get in with haste damage. Tidal Force. Ooh, that's pretty sick, I have to say. Uh, most of the creatures with force in their name are insane in this format. Maybe not the black one because it can it basically puts you on a, a quick clock. But yeah, Tidal Force is brutal. It's unfortunate for me that this is in play. So I think theoretically they'll they might want to tap one of my lands, but I think it's probably safer for them just to tap one of my creatures. And also, you know, put me dead on board if I don't hit a thing to answer this. Since even if I hit one flyer, uh they can just tap with the tidal force. Deep spawn. That is, in fact, not a sweet one. So I, I'm dead on board, so I might as well attack to see if the opponent lets me kill them accidentally. Uh, they did not, unfortunately for me. But you never know in Momer Basic. People always want to see what they were going to get. So maybe they'll just play a creature and it will deal them 3 damage. And then I'll win. Oh no, we're dead. Thorough sideboarding. And I will play first. So, you know, like I said, I'm I don't not a big fan of the one drop plan since so many of them are bricks, like this one. Uh, I am going to make a two drop in case it's one of the strong ones, and if I don't think I can force like a beatdown plan, then I'll not try it. And this is not a particularly beatdown card, although it has it has relevant text on it at some point. Fair enough. You can always hope that your opponent might misread this and think that they can just create one out of thin air instead of search their deck for it. One four flyer, not bad. I'm unclear uh, if you guys can hear the random drilling that seems to have started in my neighbor's apartment. So I'll do my best to remove that if it's a thing. 
Oh, how lucky. Murder Sword Cap that cannot kill any of my creatures. Also note that Persist does not exist in uh, Mulberry Basic. So yeah, I'll, I'll play a Plains now. I mean, I was going to play one for this guy anyway, but... This can be useful in certain situations later on also. It's almost never worth it to just um, keep mana up for these sorts of abilities early on. Since it's much more important to try and hit, you know, decent creatures. Since you can only make one a turn anyway. Karanos, that's... That's actually really insane. Uh, <laughs> um, that's going to be real hard to beat. It's gonna not only not punish my opponent for making you know uh, cheap cards. It's gonna make sure that they draw an extra card every turn. At some point, they're almost certainly gonna hit seven devotion for it, and that's gonna be very hard to get past slash block. Um. So yeah, this Karos is brutal. I approve. Croesus the Purger. So this Helium Squatter I got last turn, I didn't say anything about it. I'm not going to put counters on my flyers because I want to put uh, put counters on, you know, whatever gigantic green ground-based fat guys I get later on. So I'm going to try not to graft on the flyers unless it seems like a great idea. And I guess I can get stuck in now. Since I'm I'm now behind because of this, this gives them the inevitability, so I need to try to force damage through and finish them before they reach, you know, turn 11, turn 12. So this is a good start. Oh god, they got it right away. And they got a 4-4 first strike out of the deal. Uh, one upside to maybe should have been, I could have put a counter on this to, to block this specific turn, but I wasn't too fussed with that plan. Uh, unfortunately, Croesus the Purger also does not have bonus text in this format since the cards in hand have no color. A Razorfield Thresher. All right, that will get a counter on it. As a as a creature, I can make fly in the near future. So I think next turn I'll probably make another seven and then jump the sky with the Helium Scorcher. Fell Shepherd. Uh, what does this card do? Wow. Well, that has some nice, uh, nice text on it. Uh, sacrificing smaller guys to kill off like this would be really beneficial for the opponent. Unfortunately, I'm not too concerned about it actually hitting me, but it's certainly you know, an 8 power guy, so I don't, don't want to get hit by it too often. Hmm. So I need to, I need to consider whether I need to chump this or not. I don't think I need to chump it this turn. Alright, so as, as per mentioned last turn, I need to I know, I know they can block with Palace Familiar, but if I send two large flyers in just now, that'll be great. 
Ah, Carnage Worm. That would have rewarded me for atta uh, attacking first. But if it was like a haste um, flyer or something like that, I would have been delighted. So the opponent's down on flyers. I mean, they have this uh, Palace Familiar to jump once. Um, but next turn, I can swing in for, well, with all these guys. So all these these two are expendable. And since the opponent doesn't have lots of swamps, it's hard for them to clear out too much of my creatures with the Fell Shepherd. Although I say I'm attacking with the flyers, so he obviously probably wants to try to kill this. Uh, presumably by sacrificing this. But then I, you know, these cards still exist, they still need to block them. So they may not have the spare resources available. And I can also just gain 5 life if it's a case of pure racing. We shall see. We shall, we shall see what the opponent chooses to do. Uh, sacrificing red cap is presumably because they thought it might persist, because this card is just strictly worse, and it turns off their Karanos. Uh, you know, it's now very far away from devotion. instead of, you know, being potentially very close to Devotion. That's the uh, patron of the Nuzumi, quite a good one in general. Alright, so what are my options? I guess attack with the team is certainly an option. Well, minus this, of course. If they want to trade off Patron of the Nzumi for this, or these two creatures for Razor Field Thresher, that is okay. And since they're taking six, they need to block both of these. And I guess I can get in with the Scout. I'm actually considering just gaining five life here, because... Since I'm winning, oh, that's an interesting choice of blocks there. Since I'm winning, I don't want to run the risk of getting something horrible like the Akron Legionnaire from last game, uh, which would then stop me from winning. There's also a Denizen of the Deep, which is like a it's like an eleven eleven creature, but it also returns. Uh, all of your other creatures to your hand. So I'm gonna not do that. Since they are dead on board, as it is, to Croesus the Purger. I mean, I could probably play something if I didn't have this, perhaps. Uh, but, you know, why risk losing the game when I could just gain 5 life? Everyone loves to gain 5 life. So they have 9 mana, which does give them the out of Blazing Archon, which is a 9 mana creature that says your opponent's creatures cannot attack. Uh, they can also get Curl Pitlord, which is a large... No, actually that one doesn't fly, so maybe not. Ah, oh, that one's quite good. That's, that's just a shame. The opponents can now uh, gain a few life and trade with Croesus.
So the opponent still has to block this on crosses here. So I think what I'll do then is, like I say, I'm avoiding eights because I think I'm in a reasonable position. Like all I need to do is get a little bit more. Oh, Iona, that was quite good. It doesn't actually have any text since nobody's playing cards, so I'll name green. But yes, the opponent needs to block this, so I can happily attack with these two, since it's just free damage. I have to say the opponent's clock is you know, quite low. I mean, lots of actions have been taken and I have spoken quite a lot, but opponent's clock quite low down by comparison. The opponent chumped for one damage that, um, I mean, it's not great, but I, I don't think, I mean, he does, I mean, they don't have good options, but I don't think that was the right line to take in particular. Well, that is something that could block Iona, and they do not have forests, so I'm just going to not attack. They will lose their creature, and hopefully, well, they need to hit another flying guy or something along those lines to not die next turn. And the Springer of the Blue Dawn puts me also on the path to gigantic creatures. Although I'm sure it probably won't matter too much this game. Classic Elder Dragon though. Perhaps they should make some sort of Highlander format when you can play that guy. Opponent firmly not on the 9 drop plan. They do not want to play Zarkon, and they, and they conceded. Hooray, high stakes. Okie dokie, time for more Momer basic. And you'll see I've upgraded my lands. I mean, they're not, not that much better than mixed, non-matching, white-bordered, onslaught stuffs, but you know, they're nicer, tend to match. And I'm going to keep the same tactics as last match. One day, one day I will definitely hit Azorius Guildmage. Now Azorius Guildmage has been something that I've wanted to hit ever since Mumir Basic existed. Since the ability of one blue, two colourless counter target activated ability just locks out the other player, as long as you have an island. So it's basically the whole reason I have islands in my deck. Well, you see, I didn't quite have enough matching lands, but just whatever, they're, they're still nice. I see. So, this is uh, not a beatdown card. I'm certainly not looking to pressure my opponent's life total with by curving out here, so I'm just gonna skip my three, go up to eight. I.e. that's that's the tactic. There's not there's not much else. Vaporkin. Well, that's gonna ding me a few times. Oracle of Maldaya, ooh, that one's that, that one's crazy. That one's absolutely brutal. It doesn't kill them exactly, but it ramps me super hard and will get me to you know, game ending Eldrazi's faster than pretty much any other card. So that's that's great. 
I'm very happy with this. I am sure they'll probably hit a Necro Tower right here and just destroy my fun, but you can't win them all. That's potentially a sweet one. Turn five, seven drop, standard, standard. Uh, no. Do not want to discard my hand. <laughs> but still, seven, five flying, not bad, not bad. Now, obviously I'm feeling quite Feeling quite good, feeling quite confident. On the other hand, the game is not over. The game, ugh. Cumulative upkeep and protection from snow. That's not really the card they wanted there, I'm pretty sure, but... Uh, you know, like, there are certain cards which are have abilities which can, you know, hold off all the opponent's creatures and that sort of thing. Like, if they get a Platinum Angel and then into some other... Uh, brutal card, then you know, I can still lose. Oh, there's the Blazing Archon I was talking about. An opponent's uh, creatures cannot attack me. So next turn, I'll make an 11 drop, try and hit, you know, a uh, huge Eldrazi or a Dark Seal Colossus or something. And showing that I haven't done my research. I don't think there's a 13. I mean, I know there's a 13 Emrakul in the new set, but this is uh, this is Magic Online, so it's probably not out yet. Oh, I completely forgot to play them off the top of my deck. See, that's... that's... Uh, that's carelessness. Ah, Polar Kraken. That's alright though, I can actually overwhelm that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just by sacrificing a couple of lands and using Oracle. Classic, classic uh, magic creature. Being a Balagad. No, that's a pretty good one. Uh, they don't let me make more guys. That's a disappointment. Yeah, there was, there's nothing at 11 that loses you the game. There are some underwhelming ones for sure, but nothing that actively makes me lose the game from that position, so. I was just, uh, you know, I want to I wanna see what I get. Which is the thinking that gets people killed when they... Um, play cards at the 8 and 7 mana range when you don't need to. I, I can commend this choice of basic land also. Yeah, that one, that one looks nice. Riptide Mangler. That's not bad for a two drop. I mean, I'm unlikely to be using it anytime soon, but you know, at some point it can turn into a 7 3 or something like that, so it's about as useful as a 1 3 is. It's considering it can block two twos. Uh, cards good against, you know, artifact features like Bosch. Gearcrafter. No, they can they can destroy my thopter. What a disaster. But since this is more more basic, if they were in a non-joking way to pay two mana 
to destroy a Thopter, that would be great because it means they have a very underwhelming drop at some point. Druid's Familiar is actually pretty excellent since that's going to probably pump this guy, let the opponent attack in, do you make a 4 4? And in future, their giant guys will be even more giant. So, yeah, that's a nice one. It's uh, certainly no Oracle of Moldiah, but it is a good card at that cost. Yeah, an AC manipulator. Well, that'll be good if I get any uh, changelings. Or Slivered Queen next. Next turn, that would be amazing. But it is likely to just be tapping one of these creatures. I could have uh, not played anything, uh, pumped this guy's power to be a 4-3 four, four, uh, four, to try and trade. Okay. Um, but I was sort of hoping to just get like a, a creature with 5 toughness. To hold the fort. Well, I'm I'm getting a, a ground pounding here. It's fairly unusual for this format, but that's okay. An eight eight. Well, that's uh, that's gonna show these guys who the boss is. There's certainly a consideration here for tapping one of their lands with Telekinetic Sliver, now that I have this, because it's so huge, if they want to, you know, send in some clowns to, and then lose one to Fusion Elemental, that's fine. So, yeah, I think I'll, I'll do that, stop on upkeep. Uh, tap some, tap one of their lands with Telekinetic Sliver stop them from, you know, making a 6 drop. This will probably switch over to tapping a flyer at some point, but I will invite them to attack. No Riftbring Cloudsgate, please. Cabo, 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 chameleon. Well, they come and go different colors, you see. I think this time I'm going to I am going to make this uh, a creature that's relevant, mm, and then I'll I'll actually just refuse to I'll refuse to play a a card this time because I might want to go up to nine since I'm sort of in control. So I can make this an 8-3, which is pretty beastly. Take the upkeep stop away for now. Wow. So this is another of the class of creatures which will get the opponent to Emrakul uh, slash other gigantic things at some point. Which is, and it's, you know, pretty, pretty beastly since it has, since it's a death touch. And while then, you know, the card drawing doesn't matter too much because it doesn't really matter how many cards they have in their hand, but as long as they're making land drops. And also, even, unless I kill it right now, the damage will be done anyway, they'll have drawn an extra six cards. So, or an extra five. 
So now, once again, I am thrust into the role of attacking people with Razor Field Thresher again. Um, well, I think I may actually just come in with this Fusion Elemental. Hmm. Because they can, they can trade for it with like these two guys. Then that frees up Druze Familiar. I'm not, not a big fan of that. I think the, the main draw for attacking Fusion Elemental there would be that possibly they would block with Damia, but I don't see that happening and we'll just have to hope to get there with some sweet cards. Razia. That's a pretty good one. I guess it doesn't matter exactly what I'm using this, but time to tap their flying guy with an ability. No, uh, they didn't use it, so I guess they had no plans to attack anyway. That is acceptable. Ooh, Terracidon. Well... That's... It's debatable <laughs> what exactly I want to be blowing up here, to be honest. Is there going to be making land drops. Anyway, you know, this can delay them from reaching the big things for a while, but then they'll just never get to attack on the ground, basically. I think that's okay, though. Well, I should, probably should have blown up different cards there, but... Just playing fast and loose, that's all. So yes, now these guys are holding the fort. This Thopter is doing doing a lot of hard work. So I think I probably want to make some nines. Nesting worm. If I make some nines, I can maybe get Kuru Pit Lord, which can like kill off this and this. If I if I want to, if I want to do that. Uh, it also has a bunch of, you know, nine nine has a bunch of sort of kind of mediocre creatures, but it also has a bunch of like really good top end flyers. Ah, uh, they won't remember to use Razia this time. Well, sounds like drilling happening even closer to me than before. That's great. Although, if I edit correctly, you'll never know. Uh, the, the various bringers that are at 9 are always pretty good also. Zodiac Dragon. Oh, Vanilla 8-8 eight, eight is not exactly what the Doctor ordered, but... Hmm...
Ooh. That one's a pretty brutal one. Thankfully I didn't actually have anything too insane in play for it to the exile, but yeah, it's just a a large flame tongue cabo in this format. That means the Razia is gonna be a big problem from now on also. Could have really done with the opponent hitting Phage that turn. Phage the Untouchable, of course, being the creature that if you didn't play it from your hand, you lose the game. Opponent wishing to trade Nesting Worm for Thopter, which I guess is something I can do. Just to make sure that it's dead though. Just, just want to make sure. Make that nesting worm the deadest nesting worm we've ever seen. Thing from the deep. Oh, I get one attack out of it, at least. Um, I need to do something. I'm, I'm simply laden with gigantic ground defenders, so... The opponent just jumped. I'm sort of surprised. I mean, I guess I didn't do the math. I don't think I'm dead. It didn't seem likely that I was dead. Think from the deep, one time. Denizen of the deep. Oh, I'm sorry. I, got, I, I gave him the wrong name and, you know, that's I was rewarded anyway. That's nice. That's these. So now the opponent can block this. And then they take all the damage and die. Hooray! <laughs> Did it. Ooh, we're back for more Momir Basic. Obviously, you just never will get in Momir Basic. Even if you have the, the worst possible opening hand of like seven islands. Uh, there's, there's no reason to ever do it. And since every card is actually quite valuable. So, like a Ravenous Rats is actually pretty good in this format because it either makes them miss a drop or means their cap is one mana cost lower. Thus, on average, it's usually a bit weaker. Ah, yes, excellent choice. Ah, looks like they've, they've gone all the way. Mesmeric Fiend, this is not a Ravenous Rat. I think the opponent will be disappointed to know. Capuchin Unicorn, well, that is a roadblock. For the Mesmeric Fiend, probable chump block in about 7 turns, insurance against some random artifact monster. Or Lucent Limited, Wall of Light. Well, sure, folk, I wasn't planning on killing them with any ground black creatures. That's a vanilla tutu. The opponent also realizing that on the play they don't wanna they don't wanna curve out because then they wouldn't get to play eights. So they did not. 
it's sometimes worth it. If, like, if your opponent just plays a gigantic wall like this, sometimes it's fine to miss a drop yourself, just because, you know, most ground creatures can't get through. Rotting Fen Snake, the most bodied by Wall of Light. At least it trades up pretty well if the opponent has, you know, some vanilla ground creatures later on. That's uh, <laughs> vanilla 3 3 for 5. Seems reasonable. Horsemanship. Now that's just strictly better flying, basically. Since there's so there are so few horsemanship creatures, this may as well just say unblockable. Right, there's one legend I think that gives uh, all your creatures horsemanship, and that guy is insane. Four one flying. It's all right. Uh, may as well be the same as this guy until I get a flyer of my own. Even Brigade. Brig brigadier, rather. Brigadier, not a Brigade. Oh, wait. He's a, he's, this guy's a soldier. Yes. Combo. I think I'm solidly in the lead now. I just need to hold serve and not accidentally die. Wow. Well, that guy is quite beastly. Um, definitely. Um, I guess it's not that great, because... I mean, it will draw them a card if they attack with it. Or, or and this, of course. Yeah, you can cash this in, but the Brigadier can... just, uh, stall it. And the Brigadier also kills the Kami of Lunacy, so... Nothing too much to fear. Guardian of the Ages. All right. Well, we I have a seven seven until further no, uh, till further notice. It cannot attack unless they attack me. So that's a shame. Gristlebrand. Yeesh. That's a good one. It's a real nice one. So I need to go pretty big here with whatever I get. Ah, yes, okay. I did mention earlier that I had, uh, you can put wastes in your deck, so I did. There is a wastes. But I'm going to play this forest in case I get the Jund Elder Dragon. Ashen Fire Beast. That's an interesting one. I can uh, sort of Earthquake. It's obviously not exactly the friendliest with my rotting fence snake, but it gives me options. You know, it kills off my guys too. What? Wow. So snap. So we're currently being outraced by Crystal Brand, but not by too much. Uh, it's sort of risky for them to try the draw seven cards option. Skilled Worm, that's very unexciting. Well, this guy isn't doing anything much, so I might as well send him in. Got to work through these uh, random blockers somehow. opponent having, you know, several choices as to how they want to block. Well, I, I think I just want to destroy this one, right? I mean, this is not that important. Like, killing off these guys doesn't really matter. And it costs them matter to do it, whereas this guy is actually a giant flyer. And we'll draw them cards without needing to pay life, so... 
And also this guy is negated by my own one, whereas with the 3-7 in play this does, this does nothing for me. Let's hope for some sort of horrible drawback creature. Bear of the Heavens. Wah! Well, I'm pretty sure I do not want that to happen. Um, since if it is about to happen, then the opponent draws seven cards, and then we basically start the game all over again, except I don't get to make any drops. <laughs> so, um, that's not great for me. Avatar Fury strikes again. Well, this horsemanship guy is trying real hard. Crystal Brand is pretty powerful. At least now we can double block Crystal Brand to kill him off. Assuming we don't die, which we might. All right, stuff. So they're letting me block this. That's fine. Uh, this guy does not trample. Pretty sure. Hmm. So let's see. If they want to save this guy, I'll at least make them use some mana. And. Hmm. Actually, no. Let's let's think about this similar. So if I if I double block Crystal Brand because I think I need to, <laughs> um, then we take this offer to trade something with this. I hmm. So as much as this kills off these guys, I guess it's this is slightly better to have on my side than a Skilled Worm, since I can control when I use it. You know, it might be useful at some point. So I can do that. And I can just chump block this thing, since as I said, I don't, I can't actually afford to let it die, since they will have seven cards and start the gaming all over again. It's important to note that I don't couldn't have blocked this one on here if they'd played all their lands out first, since then they could have earthquaked for five. Whereas here they can only do it for four. All right. So we sort of need to chump block this some more while hoping that our flyers can get in there. The opponent did like to draw seven cards, which is not terribly surprising, but they might not want you to do that since this guy is actually sort of, oh, Massacre Worm. That makes it much harder to chump block. <laughs> mm, I didn't kill anything that turn, obviously, but um, if every time I chop block this I lose two life, it's not great. Aha. Uh -huh. That's certainly a something. So... So I need to block this. And because of Massacre Worm... I also need to block this. I need to block this. 
and this as well, since... Hmm. Alright. So I think I need to get in with this guy. And then finish them off next turn. So what are what the blocks? Um, I get to block like this guy on here, this guy on there, this guy on here, then I take, no that's no good. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. So I guess I can't attack because I need to block everything. Well, time to see what happens. So yeah, so if I you know attacked in with something, I had to block, 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 but then two of my guys still definitely die, thus putting me to two, and then this Krovakin vampire finishes me off. So I need them to maybe hit something with a bad drawback, or me hit something really great on my turn. Gigantomancer. Ugh. I think that does it. Yeah, that does it for sure, since everything is now super deadly and crushes my guys in combat. So we will... I guess, I guess we'll just put all these guys in here and die. since now everything deals us two damage when they die. So we did in fact get massacred that game. It's alright though, we're back for revenge. Magic Online just, just doesn't believe you when you want to close your chat. You, you know, you want it off, you want it gone, they keep showing it again. To be fair, the opponent does have some superior deck construction. Fetid Imp. Well, that's a pretty good one. Is a 2-drop. Uh, we'll chip in for damage a bunch. And then can threaten to hold off some sort of giant flyer. So depending if they make a 2-drop and... You know, a, a bunch of creatures die instantly upon playing. So if you play something that's a 2-drop and dies instantly, I might just make a 3-drop. And this guy who makes racing super hard. So I guess I'm not trying to temple them out. I'll maintain plan to make a drop. I'm not even gonna trade one for one damage. Coral Barrier. The card's gro pretty groovy. And means I will not play an island unless, you know, I get a sufficient reason to play one. Ah, two two flyer. Deal. Well time for the flying force to try and at least <laughs> force them to start using this. Reform. Oh, that's what? Oh, that card's unreal with this card. Man, he's gonna make a 9 9 next turn. Or just like a 3 3 and a, or a 6 6, but wow, that card's brutal. Eerie Mystics. Well, uh. Oh, this, this card's this card's pretty awesome. I mean, 
most of the time you can ignore it if they don't have a sacrifice outlet, but unfortunately they not only have a sacrifice outlet, they also have a sacrifice outlet that makes this good to sacrifice. They have, you know, life gain. Honestly, I think the opponent probably shouldn't have even bothered making a, a drop that turn. Um, be probably better to keep the cards available, but Chaos Imps. Uh, yeah, I'll sure, I'll unleash that. I mean, it's possible that I should not have unleashed this, because, you know, blocking is actually fairly relevant, but I'm not sure about the long game going with this, so... I really like the the art progression on these tokens. I strongly approve. Wow. Oh my god, the, the, the combo is... What? It's outrageous. Uh, well, let's see. Do I want to be holding up uh, Death Touch this turn? Nah, I probably don't want to do that. Sevens are quite a big game. This card is okay, but not super great. You know, scavenge makes it a, a vanilla 5-5 five five in this format. Barbarigmos. Where's my pithing needle? Okay, I think from now on I'll have to leave some dead touch open. This is a 3-5 flyer with no abilities in this format. Ah, uh, the opponents were not willing to go deep on that particular demon guy. Oh, I mean, I still have some flyer advantage. I can chunk whales. Ugh, another forest creature. The card's sick. Time to do some blocking. I'll have to give it a touch now, it doesn't matter when. Uh, so this guy has trample and has some, like, good abilities, so... I guess I'll block it with that, and the thing, I don't have anything. I don't see any particular downsides to blocking this. Uh, I guess this guy's going to get iced by the Magmatic Force. But also Magmatic Force is a good clock by itself, so I'm going to need to hit pretty well here. I mean, I have three power of flyer in play, so maybe I can hit like a 7-7 seven, seven with haste. Or a hoverguard sweepers. Scourge of Care Ridges. Well, that's... That is a powerful one. Can I win if I threw an attack? This magmatic force hits me to nighten. And then I need to block this and block this. So then I take one, two, three. 
Hmm. I think I think what needs to happen is I need to hit them in the air and block like chump block and then hit some sort of brutal eight cost card to kill them. Uh it seems unlikely, but I mean we're so so far behind. Uh we're not getting out of it by leaving my opponent on you know an even healthier life total. I mean, this feels bad, and the opponent does have this Disciple of Gristlebrand, but I need to play to my outs, and the outs do not involve, you know, just the same situation, but with them on more life. Okay, here we go. Unlikely, but you never know. That's a bit late. Unfortunately, since we're on three, so we'll vengefully hit them for three and then die on their upkeep. Good beats.